Oh. All Hi. right. Good morning, you guys. Okay. All right. Whoop. Let me erase my phone. How are you guys doing today? Good? All right. Um, let's see. Awesome. So you guys are here for sixth and seventh grade uh, science today. So that'll be super fun. We're going to do a little more about plants, pollination, seed dispersal, um, and if we have time at the end, hopefully some soil. Um, so let me catch this real quick and then we will get started. So, uh, how's everyone's Wednesday going? Good? Good. All right. Um, awesome. More friends are coming, which is good. Okay, and then uh, if you guys could, Ricky, I got you. Is this fifth grade? Is uh, sixth and seventh grade. Oh, science. Well, fifth grade isn't working. The fifth grade link isn't working? Okay, uh, let me see. Wait, I think my sister is entering. Okay. Uh, let's see. I can go try again. Yeah, try fifth grade again for me. Um, and if it's not working, hmm. Yeah, let me see. Um, let's see if I can. Hmm. Thank you for being patient, you guys. Aha. Um, it is three, four, two, one. Nine. Bam. Okay. So we are going to be sending, not sending, going over pollination today, which is awesome. And that just logged me out. Okay. So pollination, we are going to be talking about awesome Olia we got. And Casey's here, awesome. We got someone else coming. All right, are you guys able to change your uh, first, or change your um, uh, username type thing to be your first name? Hi, Nathan. If it's not already, Hi, just rename yourself your first name, just because I'm trying to uh, make sure I've got everyone. Okay, so let's get started with some science. We are going to be talking about um, pollinators today. So I know you guys hopefully know what pollination is. Yes? Yes. Good, right? Okay. So we're going to pollination. Uh, so we are going to go into um, different types of pollinators and what kinds of uh, flowers that they are going to be attracted to because all of them, surprisingly or unsurprisingly, are different. So the first pollinator we are going to go over today is uh, actually- Ms. Vike? Yes. Can I go sharpen my pencil real quick? 
Go ahead, go ahead. Oh yeah, and then if you guys have a paper, pencil, um, however you're taking notes, um, just like before, I'm gonna check your notes at the end of the session. Hopefully I'll remember to stop a few minutes early. My sister yes. is saying that the fifth grader one is not working. Uh, yes, I am having, um, I've let uh, our administration people know and they are working on getting a fifth grade one working for you guys. Right. Yeah, fifth grade doesn't work. Okay. Um, uh, okay, let me see. I want to try again and it didn't work. Okay, so fifth grade still isn't working for block two. Okay, well, I mean, if fifth graders want to join this, this, you know, they can do science this block also. Um, they might have it again later, but, uh, and then if they do miss the class, then it will be available online um, later to rewatch so they can get the class even though they didn't. First block it. wasn't working either. First block wasn't working for you guys? Okay, well, even if it's not working, the class is happening. Um, even if you guys aren't able to get in, so you will be able to uh, find it on our YouTube channel later, um, probably this evening to uh, watch, rewatch. Okay. So it is not the end of the world. Um, as you can see, it's still our first week, so we are working on making sure everyone can get in and that it can run smoothly. Uh, and so next week should be a breeze getting you guys in. But as you know, we are still working on making sure everyone gets in and can get into their class. So. Uh, Yes, but thank you for being patient and for letting us know when things aren't working because otherwise there's no way we can fix them. So with that in mind, the ones who are here, we are going to get started by talking about the wind. So, whoops, that's my marker. We are going to start, yeah, we'll start right away. So, pollination by the wind. By the wind. So, about... 20% of all uh, angiosperm plants, that is plants that have flowers and seeds, and that's the way they reproduce, uh, which is most flowers and plants that we're gonna talk about. Um, they are going to, 20% of them are going to rely on the wind. 20% of plants rely on the wind for pollination. Uh, which doesn't seem like a lot, but in the grand scheme of things, right, 20%, that's a fifth. So, uh, you know, it's a pretty good chunk. Now, these guys, because the wind is not living, it's abiotic, right, because the wind's not living, there's no real selective pressure on these flowers to create anything worth stopping for, right, because the wind isn't selective. The wind will pick up whatever is in its path and keep moving and take, right, the pollen, take whatever it needs to wherever it's going without really caring about where it ends up. Um, and so for that reason, these plants, these ones that are pollinated by the wind, are usually small, they're usually green, right, not brightly colored, they're inconspicuous, they don't stand out, because they're not trying to get noticed, inconspicuous, um, usually no smell, Oops, no smell, because there is no evolutionary benefit to having a smell, right? Because the wind uh, doesn't actually care um, what it picks up and pollinates. So that is pollination by the wind. Um, I am going to move my word inconspicuous because it's really long and I won't have time to write my other notes for a room. So inconspicuous is going to go right down the top of my smell so I can fit or inconspicuous, right? Big word for meaning not a lot of standing out. And just like always, if you have any questions, um, anything, then uh, let me know. Feel free to holler at me, Ms. Bike. Um, you're going too fast, Ms. Bike. I can't read your writing, Ms. Bike. Your head's in the way, right? whatever you need. So that is pollination by the wind. And that is 20% of plants that are pollinated by the wind, which is awesome. Because the wind is important. Except when it's not windy, that makes it kind of hard to follow me, right? So the next one, I'll go, I realize I'm moving kind of fast. I will go a little more slowly so that you guys can have time to write. And then like always at the end, I'll be checking. Either you can screen share or you can uh, hold up your notes to the camera so that I can see your, uh, your notes.
I'm also working on making my writing neater for you guys. But sometimes it's hard to see through the camera, I realize. So the next one we're going to go over, one you're probably hopefully all familiar with, is pollination by bees. Hopefully we know that bees are all pollinators, yes? Yes, you can nod, I can see you, yes. Good, thank you, Olia, thank you, my friends. Okay, good, good, good. So bees account for 65% of uh, plants, pollinating 65% of plants. Is that more than half? Yes. yes, thank you, good, I'm glad we know that too. That is more than half of all plants are pollinated just by bees alone. And for some major crops, it can be even more. Um, so that is the crazy thing about bees is that they do about 65% of all plants. Now, often these are going to be brightly colored, these flowers, because they're trying to attract the attention of the bees. Brightly colored, uh, usually yellow or blue, but not red. Not red, because red actually to bees looks kind of dull. Red does not look very nice to them. They don't like the way it looks. It doesn't stand out to them at all. Um, so usually flowers that bees pollinate are not going to be red, okay, which is interesting. Yes, if you have a question, you can just raise your hand. You can just unmute yourself and ask me, Ms. Bike, what's going on? Um, if it is something you don't want everyone to hear, you can of course type it to me. Yes, Jeremy, what's up? Okay, so Riley, she's having trouble like getting into uh, the class. And okay. it says like that you have another meeting in progress. Like, like yeah. Okay. Um, is she? Let me see. She should be using the link that I sent out in the text. Um. So she. Um. If she is, because I just sent out a text, right, to um, all my Anaheim families with the link to this, um, and it says sixth, seventh grade, block two. So if she clicks on that, then she should be able to um, get in, hopefully, and it will show up that she can get in with me. So bees, right? Not red. Have they got the fifth grade thing ready, done yet? Uh, yeah, it should be. Um, they're sending it out right now, so it should be arriving soon if it's not um, right. shown up yet. So bees, if you are wondering about the, uh, the way that bee flowers smell, they have a delicate, sweet fragrance. Whoops, that's a not too important. Delicate, sweet smell. Mm. As you know, they're not small attractive because the bees, right, they can smell and they want to know what they're going to be pollinating. So a delicate, sweet smell is always helpful for bees to be attracted to the flowers. Now, the other cool thing about flowers that are pollinated by bees is that um, they, oh yes, uh, there we go. Everyone see now? Once I move my head, yes. Excellent, okay. So the cool thing about flowers that are pollinated by bees is that bees can actually see ultraviolet light. So if you've ever heard of UV rays from the sun, Ultraviolet light, that's what that stands for. Bees can see that just with their eyes, right? We need obviously a special light to do that. Um, but bees can see ultraviolet light without any you know, special enhancement. So a lot of flowers actually have what they call guides on them, ultraviolet guides that show the bees where the nectar is, right? And so it's sort of usually in the middle of the flower, right, where all the pollen and the nectar is. Um, but it's to catch bees eyes, even though we can't see it, but it's to catch bees eyes and to be like, look, a flower, nectar, come here. And so they use the UV as a guide to figure out where the, uh, where the nectar is. Yes, so that is a uh, pollination by bees. Bees, there we go, bees, right, UV light. Uh, Yes, some, right, so we are going to, some are bees, we're going to go over all the different pollinators. Um, and so we're going to get into the other ones. We're going to do butterflies, moths, um, birds, all of that. So the first one we did was wind, 20% of plants, um, and 
small, green, and conspicuous, usually no smell because uh, the wind does not care what flowers it picks up. And then uh, we just did bees, which is 65% of plants, and um, uh, usually yellow or blue, not red, because bees don't really aren't attracted to the color of red. For some reason, they don't like it. And so uh, they will be going after the yellow and the blue flowers that have a light, sweet smell to them. So uh, I am going to move on to our next pollinator that we are going to talk about. Does anyone still need my wind notes? Because I am going to be asking you all to show me your notes at the end of the session. So if you're taking them on your computer, you can screen share or email them to me. Um, and if you are writing them by hand, you can just hold them up to the camera. I'm going to ask you guys to take notes and show them to me at the end. So does anyone, you can give me a thumbs up or holler at me if you still need my wind notes. Can I erase those? I'm good. You good? All right. I if still you need them, to write them, so. um, get them from a friend, and I'm happy to give them to you again at the end if you still need them. But, um, Wait, Jeremy still needs them. Huh? I still Jeremy need still them. needs the notes. Okay, well, I will, um, I'll reiterate it. So, okay. what have you got? 20% of plants, uh, usually small, green, and conspicuous, no particular smell, um, and that is pollination by the wind. Now, the next one we are going to be looking at, which one should we do? We could do, uh, let's do bats, because I think bats are pretty cool. So pollination by bats, um, make a small column for that. So bats are usually going to have um, flowers, or you and I like flowers. Well, when are bats awake? When are bats doing their pollinating? You can unmute yourself. Anyone? Fruit bats um, pollinate. Poly yes, but when are they doing the pollinating? What time of day? Huh? Do we know Say when again? bats are awake? At night. Um, usually in the middle of the night or in the yeah. mornings. Yeah, yeah, usually at night, right? So these bats, because they're awake at night, they're going to be looking for lightly colored flowers that don't completely blend in. Right? If I'm looking at a black flower at night, then it's going to be harder to see. But not that there are many black flowers, but if I'm looking at like, you know, bright white one, a yellow one, right? Lightly colored flowers are going to be much more attractive to bats um, than other flowers, right? Darker ones. And the smell they like, they just like, you know, like, you know, sweet, aromatic, um, and that's just like having a nice aroma, smelling nice, um, aromatic flowers. So that is what bats are attracted to, and that obviously happens, you know, um, at night, because they are nocturnal. There you go. So bats, pretty cool, pretty useful, right? Bats are pretty neat, um, but they pollinate, which is uh, wonderful for us, because if we did not have pollinators, we would not have a lot of plants, right? Really wouldn't have any plants unless we did all the pollinating, which requires a lot more work than if the animals do it. So that is why we like wind and animals, because they help us continue to spread plants, continue to grow plants, continue to have food to eat, right? Yes, so bats. If you want to draw a little bat, you can, right? These are my bats. Oops, that's a butterfly. There's my bat, right? So you want to draw a bat, just so you know you're talking about bats, you can because uh, I like to show little insects and fly animals when I can too. So if I turn my camera a little more, there we go. We should be able to go on to these guys. And the next one we are going to talk about is birds. Pollination by birds, like all the way up here. And hopefully you know that all of this is pollination by, but I don't have to write pollination by anymore here. You know that we're talking about pollination. Um, Okay, so pollination by birds is um, their flowers are obviously going to be a little bigger because uh, flowers, not flowers, birds are a little bigger than most other pollinators, right? Um, like, you know, a hummingbird is bigger than a fly or a bee, right? Um, so they're going to be bigger. They are going to be uh, brightly colored as well. 
because birds are, uh, you know, attracted to color. Larger, brightly colored, usually red or yellow. Often red or yellow. And actually, usually they do not have a smell, a strong smell. Because birds actually don't have a strong sense of smell. Um, fun fact. So because there is no strong sense of smell um, in, uh, in birds, usually flowers that are pollinated by birds do not have a strong aroma. Usually no uh, aroma. Because it doesn't really matter, right? If I'm looking at how something looks and I don't care how it smells, I would think put out a smell if it's not going to matter, right? So birds, usually the flowers are larger. Um, usually they are really colored, often red or yellow, and usually there is no aroma. And, right, want to make sure that there's always, right, nectar. We know what nectar is, right? Thumbs up, yes, nectar, thumbs up, little down. Right, nectar is a rewarding pollinator. So, nectar, uh, rewarding pollinator, we know that. No, I mean, I'm talking about Matt. And she said it is not. Nectar, uh, she said it's way, way. Uh, uh, so, nectar rewards pollinator, and we are going to. Miss Bike? Huh? Miss Bike? Yes? Yeah. Can you write bigger? Bigger! Yeah! You want me to rewrite any of this? Or are you good? I can't see any of it. Any of the oh, birds? No. That, that ninja shirt? I see you out there. Any of the birds? Do you need me to rewrite birds, Olivia? What? Birds. Oh, yeah. I can't. All right, I'll rewrite my birds. Any of it. Uh, all right. So I started with. Uh, so can anyone recap anything we we're just talking about? Yeah, Nate, you want to recap yeah. that for us? No, just read us anything from your notes. Like for the um, for the birds or for anything. Yeah, else. any of the pollinators I've talked about. Just while I rewrite this. So By the wind. Okay, uh, talking about the wind. Sure. 20% is pollinated by the wind, 65% of plants are pollinated by bees, very little percentage are pollinated by bats, and small percentage of flowers are pollinated by birds. Well, good job, Kaylee. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, now, any of the notes you guys have for the good job. that we haven't talked about yet that I might do next? Um, butterflies? Butterflies! Yeah, we can do butterflies next. That's a good idea. <gasps> Time to study butterflies. <laughs> if you want to draw a bird right above your bird notes, um, you can do that too. Just to remind yourself, larger flower, just like I'm writing in a larger size. Is that a little better, Orlan? I study butterflies. Yes, no, Tammy? What? Anyone has got a better size for me to write in? Can you see better? I, what? Sorry, I, you're raising I my see better. The volume. Yes, yes. All right, thank you, thank you. All right, uh, does anyone have my B notes? Can I erase my Bs? Yeah, I have your B notes, don't worry. All right, I'm gonna erase these so we can move on to butterflies. Uh, and moths, actually. Those are grouped together with my uh, notes today. So we've got five, oops, actually I'll erase this, by moths and butterflies. So pollination by moths and butterflies. Uh, moths are actually going to be attracted to uh, lighter colored flowers. Um, lighter colored flowers, usually white or yellow. Usually white or yellow. And butterflies, I'm sorry, I'm left-handed, so you know, I'll move. Butterflies, 
usually like brighter colors. Brighter colors. Now, yes. Oh, I gotta move my camera, don't I? There we go. Is that a little better? I'm gonna move my head too. Usually, don't I? yeah. Usually, butterflies are more attracted to the brighter, more vibrant colors. Mm -hmm. Like the monarch butterfly, um, they prefer milkweed because of its brightness and its nectar. Awesome, great but example. I study butterflies. Fabulous. So they are both um, attracted to. Uh, butterflies and moths, the smell, they are both attracted to uh, sweetly fragranced flowers. So they like the sweet aroma, right? Mm -hmm. um. I did an experiment. They also try to drink honey soda and anything with sugar in it. Oh, very neat. Fragrant uh, smells, right? Smells attractive. So, there we go. Can we see all my notes? Do I need to move my camera? You guys can see. Okay, awesome. So, that is pollination um, by moths and butterflies. I'm gonna go on this side because that's easier than squatting. Um, yes. So, we've done wind, we've done bees, we did moths and butterflies, we did birds, we did bats, and then after everyone's ready to move on, we are gonna go into flies as pollinators. Um, beetles also help pollinate. Yes, beetles do. I don't have a specific section on them, um, uh, but they are <laughs> also pollinators, yes. If you wanted to do research on beetles as pollinators and present that to us tomorrow, that would be awesome um, if you're feeling like it, but if not, that's totally fine too. Okay. All right. 12 of you, awesome. Glad to have you guys for joining in. Awesome, and we started this at 11, which means I still got 20 minutes left. I am good on time. How are we doing on notes? Good? More time? Good? Anyone need more time? No. Good? Okay. I'll wait a little longer before we go. I'll just start yes, over. just a couple more minutes. I need to yeah, write this. Yeah, sure. Okay. How many other birds? Does this mic work? All right. Yeah, it does. So, yeah, it might seem kind of Thanks. weird um, to talk about flies as pollinators because that's not something you often hear, but it's a very specific uh, flower, really, that the flies pollinate. So I'll just start talking about it before I write about it so you guys can listen. Uh, flies are attracted to the smell of uh, rotting meat, actually, right? And so they, there's a flower that has evolved to smell like rotting meat. It's called the carrion flower. Um, because uh, uh, it smells like carrion, right? Uh, carrion being C-A-R-R-I-O-N, um, which is another word for rotting flesh, basically. And so it's a flower that smells like rotting meat, and the fly's attracted to it because it thinks it's rotting meat, and so the fly tries to lay its eggs in what it thinks is the rotting meat, uh, and then it turns out it's just a flower, and so when it leaves, it takes the pollen with it, and can take it elsewhere, right, to pollinate. Uh, and then the eggs hatch, but the larva doesn't have anything to actually eat because it's just in a flower. And so the larva dies and uh, the flower is pollinated. And that is the uh, sad story of how flies are pollinators for carrying flowers. And then their little eggs, they hatch, but they die. But the flower survives, right? So not always a mutually beneficial relationship in the world of nature, right? Sometimes it's a, you know, fly eat fly world. So how are we doing on notes? Good? I have okay. all of that. So uh, I'm going to write a few notes from my fly story I just told. Um, 
True story, of course. Um, but I'm going to write a few of those notes on here. Supplies as pollinators. Uh, the carrion flower. C-A-R-I-O-N, not C-A-R-R-Y-I-N, apostrophe, right? Not carrion. Carrion is the rotting flesh. Carrion flowers, right? Smell like rotting meat. Oh, like rotting meat. And that tricks the flies. Meat tricks flies into pollinating. How about that? Into pollinating. And we know that um, fun fact about spelling is that um, pollen, whoops, yeah, this way, uh, pollinating, pollen and pollinating um, actually um, uh, spell differently, right? Because pollen is P-O-L-L-E-N and pollinating is P-O-L-L-I-N-A-T-I-N-G, right? So, right, pollen itself is going to be, um, there we go, pollen itself is going to be uh, E-N, and then pollinating is going to be I-N, right? So that is, don't forget when you're spelling to make sure we're spelling E-N and I-N correctly. How are we doing on notes? Good. Who still needs more time to write down my fly notes? Anyone? Okay, a little more time. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. I'll give you guys a little more time. The Should we next... show you our notes right now? Yes. Sorry. Should we show you our notes right now? Not yet. No, we still got more time. I'm gonna give you more stuff. We are not done. Can I borrow a pencil? Got you, Chris. Bruh. I'm sure any of your friends are happy to help you out, Chris. What? I'll be there in five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, here. here you go, Chris. <laughs> Thanks, bro. You're welcome. Okay. Uh, we're going to move on. Um, now that this silliness is done, we are going to move on to fruit and seed dispersal. What does dispersal mean? Can anyone remind us what dispersal means? To disperse? I don't know any words, so I don't know what you're talking about. Anyone want to try and give us a helpful answer to what dispersal means? Dispersal, like this. No? No one wants to take a guess? Like giving out, sort of? Yeah, spreading out, right? So dispersing, if I'm dispersing it to you, right? I'm putting it all out there. So I'm dispersing stuff to you, like Jeremy said, giving it out, spreading it out in this case, fruit and seed dispersal. Spreading out in a wide area. Yeah, exactly, spreading out in a wide area. So uh, that is how seeds are spread. And we're gonna go over three main different ways that seeds are uh, spread around and get to grow more. Okay. So, uh, can I erase my moths and butterflies? E. Okay, I'm gonna do that. And we are going to start talking about uh, fruit and seed dispersal. Whoops, dispersal. I gotta use the eraser the right way for it to work. Okay, so fruit and seed dispersal. Anyone have any ideas about what that means? Fruit and seeds could get spread out um, through nature, by nature. Any ideas? How on earth could it possibly happen? I give you the first way. It's the same as the first way of pollinating, right? Fruit and seed dispersal. Can you see this one? Yeah, we're good. Fruit and seed dispersal. The first way. What was the first way of pollinating we talked about today? The wind. The wind, right. And that's the first way of dispersing seeds that we're going to talk about too. Awesome. Wind. Now, the seeds that are dispersed by the wind usually are going to have a shape, right? Kind of like a wind shape, right? They're going to be wide, probably pretty flat, 
something that will be easy to uh, carry through the wind, right? We want to make sure um, that it is possible for this seed to fly long distances. And so What's that fly, thingy? Usually, they're going to have a wing shape. What was the question? A picture? A picture? No, what's that picture thing? Oh, I just sort of drew like a, a what a seed could look like if it were um, winged, right? Wing shape for the wind. Um, I'll tell you the next way that seeds can be dispersed is uh, through the wind. No, not through the wind. I just said wind. Through the water. That's the other W word I meant. So through the water, some seeds can float for months or even years in uh, water to get to other places. Can anyone take a guess as to an example of right, a fruit seed that could float for a very long time in water? Any ideas? It might fall off of a tree uh, on an island. Uh, there's milk inside. Uh, Troy, I'm going to turn off your brother's video. So, Troy, thank you. Thank you, Sebastian. Coconut, yes, Elijah, yeah, coconut. That's exactly what I was thinking of. Um, and yes, dandelion, good dispersal, right? Good, good, good. So, coconut is the main one I was thinking of uh, for dispersal through the water, right? Um, and right now, uh, I am looking for, uh, actually, right here. So, if you look... Um, I'll share my screen real quick so you guys can see an example of uh, winged seeds. Um, so these are some examples of seeds that are sort of built um, so that they can uh, they can travel further in the wind. Yeah, can everyone see this? Yes. Okay. Cool. So just an example so you guys can see. Uh, I'm not just like randomly drawing that. It's like right, wing and seed so it can travel further in the wind. That is how they travel in the wind. Now the next one, what was the second one I just told you about? We just talked about it. Coconuts, how do coconuts travel? Water. Water, thank you. Just giving you the answers, you guys. So water, if it travels through water, some fruit and seeds can float for months whoops, months at a time, right? So some seeds, fruits, whoops, can uh, float for months at a time, which is wild because, uh, you know, we're not going to float for months at a time, right? That doesn't make sense practically. Um, we have to disperse in a more practical fashion. So water is the second way and the third way Probably the most diverse way is uh, animals. Could anyone think of an example of how an animal could possibly disperse seeds? They eat the seeds and then it poops it out. Exactly! That's a great one! Awesome! Good! Right? Seed and waste, right? Because oftentimes, uh, the excrement is going to end up very far away from where the uh, seed was eaten, right? Because animals travel, animals move around a lot of them. So good. That's an awesome example. Any other uh, example that anyone can think of? What about like a little early with a bushy tail? To its skin. Sorry, what? The seed can get stuck to its skin. Good! Yes, that's another one. Some seeds are like kind of pointy, right? And if they're pointy, they can get stuck right in a paw, and then they can get moved somewhere else and then removed, right? So if your pet or you have ever stepped on something pointing, maybe it was a seed trying to travel, right? So it's not that it was trying to hurt you, it was just trying to hit your body. So Seeds and extra made good, uh, pointy, lodged seeds, also good. And there's one more way that I'm thinking of involving a rodent with a bushy tail that might be able to spread seeds out or put seeds where they might not have ended up on their own.
What if a squirrel stockpiles some nuts and then forgets about them? That's almost impossible. Almost impossible, but let's say they don't get them all, right? If there's a very forgetful squirrel, right? So, uh, uh, food stockpiles that don't end up getting used, right? Or if something happens to the animal, right? Um, or if the animal gets moved, right? Something happens, then obviously the stockpile goes um, unused, uneaten, and then uh, things could grow from, especially if it is uh, seeds, nuts, fruit, all that jazz. And those are the three main uh, seed dispersal methods, right? We've got wind, water, and animals. Almost three-way alliteration, but not quite. That would make me very happy if it were not. Oh, alliteration. Anyone tell me what an alliteration is? No. Alliteration is wind, water, uh, web, uh, wicked, right? All the words that start with the same sound. If it starts with the same sound, then that's an alliteration. Uh, so, right, brown, box, right, uh, bud, uh, other B word, bed, right? So, uh, alliterations are very powerful use in your rhetoric. Um, when you're writing, if you're trying to make someone remember something, alliterations are really useful. Not that this is right, but just a tip for you guys. Uh, I like to use alliteration when I can because I think it's really fun. So, uh, there we go. Awesome. Uh, not that this is English, which it's not, but everyone have my food and seed dispersal notes? Yep. No, we're still going. Okay, I'll leave it a little longer. Yes, ma'am. Yep. Yes. Okay, I'll leave it a little longer in case anyone needs it, and I will start to talk about the thing we're going to start now but we will not have time to finish. Uh, we are going to start talking about soil. Not the most exciting thing you might think, but there's a lot of parts of soil that you might not think about, right? So how is soil formed, right? What is soil made of? That is the first uh, question we're gonna think about. So soil is formed um, with uh, mineral particles from rocks. How do we get these mineral particles, one might be wondering. I don't know if you are, but I'm definitely hoping that some of you are wondering, so I'm going to tell you how. Basically, there's a few different ways that it can happen. Um, either uh, water can freeze in a crevice between rocks in a rock, and as we know, when water freezes, it expands a bit, and so that can cause fracturing fissures in a rock. Um, there could be just sort of any sort of elemental pressure on the rocks uh, to cause fracturing. Um, uh, plant roots can also secrete acid that can break down rocks and then that can cause fracturing. But basically, rocks break into tiny little pieces. And then uh, minerals, mineral particles become a part of the soil. Now they don't become all of the soil, right? Because our soil is more than just tiny pieces of rock, right? Our soil also probably has, let me write soil up here so you know what we're doing. Soil probably, whoop, can you see that? There you go. Soil also has living organisms in it. Whoa, right? You ever found a worm in the dirt, right? Organisms. Living organisms are a part of the soil as well. Crazy, right? Totally crazy. So. The last part of soil that we are going to uh, go over is called, wait for it, humus. H-U-M-U-S, it's not hummus. It's humus, right? There's only one M, it's not hummus. One M, humus. Humus, right, humus. So humus, you might be wondering, Miss Mike, what's humus? What could it be? I don't know, it's not hummus, what is it? It is uh, basically particles um, of dead organisms. It's the remains of dead organisms and other organic matter. Super exciting. Remains of dead 
organisms, right? Because we've got the living and then we've got the humus, which is dead organisms and other organic matter. Other organic matter. Other organic matter. Woo! Okay, so those are the three main parts of soil that we will be uh, starting with today. We will continue with soil. I don't know who needs what knows. We will continue with soil. Do you know what time um, your next class starts at? Next class. Your next class starts at 12.10 today, I want to say. Um, yes. 12.10. 12 12.10, yeah. So if you log on at 12.10, you should be good. And uh, yes, if the link's not working again, just let one of your teachers know. Um, give us a text, shoot us an email, you know, uh, message us on Brightwheel, whatever works to get us uh, information because we want to make sure that all of our friends are able to get in. So my sister um, wants to get in here today. Okay, thank you. Um, Yes, thank I you. Oh, I was about to get there. Thank you for that question. Um, we are going to share oh, notes. So, if you took notes um, by hand, uh, okay, Olia, I see yours. Uh, who else? This is my first page. Awesome. Chris, I got you. Anyone else? Good, Kaylee, thank you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Good, Nicholas, <laughs> Sebastian, uh, what? who's showing me their screen? Who is this? Thank you, but who is showing me your screen right now? It's Charlie. Charlie, thank you. <laughs> All right. What else? Uh, thank you. Okay. Get mine. Who said, did you get my name? I got you. Oliab you, said it. Yeah, Oliab, I got you. Let me see. Bye. Where's... Bye. Okay, who's showing me this? Uh, Elijah. Elijah, thank you. Sorry, I can't what? see who's screen sharing. Um... Okay, um, yes, if I have seen your notes and said, yes, I have your notes, uh, you are uh, you free to disconnect. Your next class will oh, start at 12.10. Um, thank you guys for joining me for science. I had a great time. Thank you guys for always oh, being okay. awesome during class, right, I and I hope to see you guys very again very tomorrow. Wait, thank thank you. you. Who do I still need to see? Oh, notes bro, I later. Like, how do we do that? Uh, well, my thing was yes, Jeremy, I got you. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else no, not getting any notes? <laughs> All right. Maisie, did you get to take any notes? Okay, that's okay. You got on late. Um, <laughs> and Sydney, I know you got on late too. Uh, in the future, any. Thank you, Riley. Awesome. In the future, any uh, class of mine that you log into, and I'm sure a lot of other teachers will want you to take notes. And uh, I'm going to ask you at the end just to show me the notes. Uh, if you want to email them to me, that also works. Um, and that is it. All right. You guys are all set. I want to ask sixth grader. Uh, oh. Remind me of your first on. name. It's Blaine, right? Yes. Okay. Thank you. I just want to make sure I had all the names right for oh. Awesome. You guys are all set. Thank you very much for tuning in. Have an awesome rest of your Wednesday. I'll make a Zoom. I'll, I'll make a Zoom, boys. Let's do it. Okay, bye. Amazing. Oh, yeah. Sydney. Maddie, what are you doing?